Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Bring It On. So I did look all over for these two locations. I search high and low and to and fro. I have no idea where they're at. So either it's bugged out or this isn't as side tasky as I thought. And we'll find this later on during the main investigation. So let's check out this door. An old door worn by elements guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. So the multi-tool doesn't help with this at all. You know what? This might be one of those situations where the, the failure is just as beneficial. So let's, uh, let's try opening the door. You rattle the handle a bit, then push on the door with all your weight. It does not budge. Not only is it locked, it's also jammed shut. Huh, the door's shut tight. How can we get in there? We don't get in there. Lieutenant shrugs. What do you mean? We get into, like, everywhere. Frankly, you're just going to have to accept the fact that you can't get in through every single door. Is this getting meta on me? I think it's getting meta. No, no. We've gotten into every door thus far. That's what we do. We open doors. We're cops. That's our perk. Even Everard knew that's a part of our M.O. But that's who I am. Who we are. Yeah, I understand you. I lack opening doors as much as the next guy. But this one is simply beyond repair and we don't have the resources needed to open it. Relax. No one's hiding in there. If we can't open it, others can't either. And thus they can't get in. He looks at the door with a rueful smile. At least you can think about opening it, about doors in general. They are, after all, fundamental to your life. Perhaps something useful would come from this. One more door. So we get plus one half light while this is equipped. Uh, what is behind it? Then gosh darn it, it cannot be. A disgrace. That door on the coast. You remember the one, right? The one that leads to the abandoned supply depot. Why, in the name of all that's holy, does it not open? Why? There has to be a way to get through that unopenable door. By gods, you're the police. All doors are supposed to open before you. What will the others at the precinct think if you can't open a gosh darn door? There must be a way. I still suspect we come up from below that. Can we go into the Feld building? Because we saw the sewer entrance over here, and I think it all connects up to there once we go in. But I could be wrong. Alright, I want to try this phone call one more time with the figurine that I have. A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. There's a bitter, caustic taste on the tip of your tongue as you look at the handset. Life is garbage. Put 10 cents in and dial the long phone number one more time. You dial the number again. As you've done many times. You remember it well now. 001 Calling. 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 And calling for who knows how long, but no one answers. You need to insert more money to call again. You want my money? Punch the phone. The cold metal is hard and your knuckles bleed. Well, I'm wearing, I'm wearing gauntlets. I think I'd be okay. That's enough now, officer. The tenant stands at a distance. You want more money now, huh? You want freaking money? Punch the phone again. It didn't give you any fun for that money. Your hand is swelling up. Officer, that's enough. Let's return to work. That's right. Walk away. It's over. 
Okay, then I'm out of ideas as to how I'm supposed to offer figurines to Dolores today. Unless I go back to the church and try again. Speaking of which, I think we go back to the... Yeah, return to the church. We have the transceiver, so we just need to go and talk to Noid. All right, Dolores. The mother of humanism stands above you. A pressure. Why? That does seem to be a problem. The mother of. Okay, nothing new there. Yo, man, what's on your mind? He drops a bolt into his toolbox. I found a radio transceiver. So your cop ways came through again. Impressive. Let's see what you got. I found this in an office by the harbor. Use a perfectly adequate transceiver. An ordinary white collar transceiver joins the hardcore underground. Yeah, this should do nicely. All right, Lawfarer, we're ready to do this. I have to warn you though, once we commit, there's no stopping until we've seen it all the way through. No pauses, no second chances. This is our shot, you got it. So any cop prep you gotta do, you do it now. We'll wait if we have to. Wait, didn't you say we need some kind of power supply? Don't sweat that. Egg found something down near the water lock. Some maniac abandoned a perfectly good power source. That maniac is obviously you, which makes the power source your half sunken Capri 40. You mean the motor carriage that I crashed, uh, yeah, crashed into the bay. That explains why it was covered in cop colors. Old things totaled, but lucky for us, the engine on the back is still perfectly good. All I have to do is run a cable from the engine up the Centaur Man's Memorial. It won't last forever, but it should buy us enough time to get you synced up with a big bag. What kind of cop prep do I need to do? How should I know? <laughs> it's up to everyone to know their own needs. Whatever keeps your body and soul in top working condition. At the very least. You should make sure you're wearing a good pair of gloves. I am. It's gonna be plus two interfacing. So. Personally, I'm gonna make sure I've got a steady supply of prep tired, Andy. Oh uh, yeah, should get some things in order first. Do what you have to do. We're not going anywhere. I do. Hardcore church! Nowhere else to go! Like Egg said. All right, so I do want to turn this thing to the uh, cryptozoologist, let him know that I put the locust back in the trap, and then we can do that quest. So he said no detours, and I, well, I get sidetracked easily. In my defense, it is really easy to get sidetracked in this game. Which is a good trait, good trait to have in a game. It means the entire game is engaging. Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. The elderly woman smiles up at you, hopefully. I restocked the empty trap. Uh, where's Morel? Thank you for doing that, dear. She manages a smile for you. Her smile is weary. Her earlier ebullience has left her. Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. She looks down at her hands. It's probably for the best. It's awfully cold out there in, in those reeds. I'm sorry, dear. You've had to drudge through them so many times. Such is field work. A young person's game, as they say. Her voice is shaky. What is going on here? So, who's going to check the traps? Morel will eventually, or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. The lieutenant stares at his shoe, caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. Yeah, what's more into the breach then? Take it on with undue optimism. That really is too much, sweetie. 
thank you for your dedication, but I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. Very strange. Why is she not letting you do this? It's like she's given up. Lena, what's wrong? You seem different. Different? How? The half moons of her glasses reflect as she looks up at you. You're not telling me the whole story. I'm not. It's not that. She doesn't know how to end the sentence. What is it? It's a... A strange feeling. I haven't really told this to anyone, but... You are a police officer. She looks down, biting her lower lip. Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just that? A story? Or a dream? Hunching her shoulders now. She seems even smaller than she is. Like a sad young girl. Seeing the Insulindian Phasmid was just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. But Muriel told me you'd seen it. You also told me. Muriel's so proud of it. He always tells everyone. A terrible sting in the heart. Regret. You seem to really believe it happened. Doesn't that count for something? N no, sweetie. There's more to it than that. Morel was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmid's existence. She shakes her head. That I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists. That. And for years, his belief made me believe too. But now... We're both getting old, and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was. She shakes her head, still unable to meet your eyes. The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't write anything. He's hiding. These things are tough on him. Matters of love, not violence or deceit. How many skill points to spare? First, tell her that her marriage hasn't been a lie. But it has, hasn't it? A seed can only bear what's inside. The seed of love is black and oily. It has a taste you're quite familiar with. No, this isn't what I want. Take it from me. Love is a lie. The sooner you accept it, the better. Might be right, detective. She looks down at her legs. Gosh darn it, man. I am far too invested in this for that to... I was a paraplegic before we met. He didn't know before I came in on our first date. If I weren't the queen of the cryptozoologists. If I didn't tell him that story. She has to swallow to relax her throat. It's keeping her from talking. He'd still be into you. That's not how these things work. Maybe. But then why do I not dare tell him? I I've wasted enough of your time with this drama. I really must stop talking about it lest I start crying and waste more of your time. She sighs. What you have to know is the Insul Indian Phasmid probably does not exist. Let us fools chase our ghosts. There are a million better things to do with your life. Are there? Some of the other things are pretty bad. Yeah, to hell with this. I still believe you saw the Phasmid. A true believer. Sometimes I still see it too. The real memory of it. How it was there. Not the memory of the memory, but... It's so hard to tell the two apart. She looks out the window. Rising, unfolding from the reeds on a hot summer's day, like a benevolent god. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever, and I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. Are you sure you're, you don't need help getting to Gary's? Oh no, thank you, but I can get there on my own. This old thing is gas-powered. And then a taxi home. 
It's not so bad. She taps her chair. You do that. I'll check the traps one more time. Really? <laughs> oh, sweetie. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. She looks at you, worried. No one can stop you from finding the phasmid. Can I have your address? Just in case there's news. Okay. It's 1113 Tabernacle Road. Jamrock, but... A sigh. She doesn't think you'll need it. Yeah, the rest of it is pretty grim. Thanks for bringing some light. You're welcome, sweetie. I'm glad it helped you. Even though it turned out to be a... She flicks a switch on her chair. The engine turns on with a whir. Then the sentence remains unfinished. A waste of time. A dream. A fool's hope. Say her lips move in in silence. Like that, she drives off. The gas enters quietly as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, it's raining. We should go to... Somewhere out there, a kilometre to the southeast, a gust of wind shakes the felled building, rattling dusty windows, beckoning with strange coldness, to ask the wind once more. So we don't have the quest to find the Insulinian Phasmid anymore. I can still go check out that trap. At least the one that we put the locust back in. See if we can interact with that. And if we can, it might be worth going back through and checking out the rest of them as well. This little sojourn feels a little incomplete. But a lot of sad. It really sucks that I felt that check. When I use my skill point? Uh, oh, I think it was an authority. We were dancing. I used all my skill points to make sure Kim danced with me. A few locusts trudge along the wall of the trap. The rest are piled in a heap in the corner. Dead. No phasmid anywhere. Poor things. Oh, it doesn't like I can... Well, it might be worth checking out the other ones. If I can. I'll see if this one has any news or any new uh, options. If not, then I'll not chase the rest the down. The trap is filled with dead and dying locusts. Most of them aren't moving anymore. You still can't see a phasmid anywhere. Poor things. It also has to be the same thing each time. Don't know if it's worth pursuing. It, it probably is. Let's go check out the rest. Land's End, and then over there next to the water lock. Oh, hello there. Blood drips from your knuckles to the sand. Drip, drip, drip. I'm punching the phone. Okay, so new check. Just dead and dying locusts, and the slow swaying of surrounding reeds. Poor things. Alright, well, one more to check. May as well finish what we started. If not for us, then at least for Lena. I think she deserves a follow up on this, at the very least. That's right, I have to go all the way around, don't I? It's 
which is so far away <laughs> from the rest of them. Fast travel to the church from here. That's annoying. Alright, but we'll go back to the church, talk to Noid, and pursue this other quest. There we go. He drops a bolt into his toolbox. Okay, now I'm ready. Let's contact Archer. Rest of the crew has got to stay here. Can't afford to let the beat drop right as we're getting off the ground. He gives you a solemn nod. Much love to my hardcore antenna brothers. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Try to squeeze in a promo spot while you're on air. We've got to start putting the word out. Back across the water, lock. At least we are getting our exercise in today. That's true, Kim. All right, uh, you can grab that amplifier officer. He gestures to the lieutenant. He starts pulling up those cables. Then we can get it all in one go. Not actually supposed to daisy chain <laughs> surge protectors like that. It's always highly advised against. But I guess you have to make do when you when you've got to make do. Just plug that in there, would ya? It's done. I believe we are ready. Lieutenant wipes his brow. Yeah, as ready as we're gonna be. Grab one of these can sets, both of ya. I've got it rigged so that we can all listen, but only your cop talk will broadcast. He cracks his neck before putting on a pair of headphones. No idea what we're gonna hear when I turn this thing on, so be prepared for anything. Trick is to keep transmitting your request until the big bad acknowledges ya. You got that? Hold on, I need a minute. No time. We're live in two, one. Ah, I wanted to do the uh, the thought. A soft rustling between your ears. A winterscape with fast falling snow. Where's the sound coming from? Every light switch, every motor carriage, every doorbell, tea kettle, and radio in Martinez, all mingled with electrical interference caused by scattered thunderstorms over Ozone. Hey, no man, we're waiting on ya. What should I say? That's up to you. I don't know your call sign. <laughs> Coalition Warship Archer is RCM Officer Firewalker. Please acknowledge. You're all alone out there, wandering a blasted heath, calling out to the night, but there is no reply, except for the buzzing of invisible machines. The lieutenant looks up at you with a nervous glance. Nervous for who, though? 
you cannot say. Give it another go. Coalition Warship Archer. This is Firewalker. Please acknowledge. Perhaps you're simply imagining it, but it seems as though you're learning to pull apart the fibers of this auditory felt. You focus on one strand in particular, one that sounds very nearly human. Nein, Liebling, das lasse ich nicht zu. Wie kannst du unseren Jungen bloß auf einen dieser Dinger nach Bredeport schicken? Hello, Archer, do you acknowledge? Marianne hat mir erzählt, dass Oscar nicht mehr derselbe ist, seit er auf einem Luftschiff aus Grab zurückgekommen ist. Natürlich halten ihn die Psychologen für vollkommen normal, aber sie hat das Gefühl, Zeit seiner Rückkehr mit einem Fremden zusammenzuleben. You can't make out a word of this gibberish. Noid, they were getting some intrapanetic crosstalk. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. Er kann doch auch nächstes Jahr zur Akademie gehen. Is that what you call those radio spookers? Didn't know they had a technical name. Either way, you gotta keep it up till we get through. Coalition Warship Archer, this is Firewalker. If you're there, Archer, please acknowledge. Again. Coalition Warship Archer, this is Firewalker. Do you acknowledge? It's cold now. A slight frisson at the point where your neck meets your spine. Something about the lieutenant's words directed at you, but not you. Kim, don't clog my connection. I didn't say anything, detective. Someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. An uncomfortable silence falls over the connection. It's been a long winter. Long and cold. Are you gonna tell me you didn't say that either? I promise you I didn't, even though it certainly sounds like me. Lieutenant seems to wince at the sound of his own voice. It must be anthropogenetic crosstalk. It's the only yeah. It's the only explanation. So your partner's haunting himself. Trying to warn him off his current path, most like. It's eerie for certain, but also harmless. I just wish I could remember what I was talking about. Natürlich halten ihn die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. Maybe we should try again later. No can do. This is it. The only way forward is the hardcore way. Straight through. Now give it another go. Yeah, the brute force method. I like it. So. Coalition Warship Archer, do you acknowledge? This is Firewalker. But someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Walker, please acknowledge. Archer, this is Firewalker. Can you hear me? Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. Worship Archer, please identify. The signals are getting increasingly mixed. Plucking Archer's signal from this will be like isolating a single strand from a tangle of hair. This isn't looking good. The radio spookers are winning. The speed freak removes his sweat-drenched headphones. What can we do? Don't know. If we can't get around the interference, we're in deep trouble. Hold on. I think Gag gave me some sort of checklist. Hmm. Says here, main step, volume to the max. That's not too helpful. Okay, it also says, inspect connections for hardcore clarity. So let's try that. How am, I supposed, how am I supposed to inspect the connections? My guess, you climb up the centaur, man. See if there's anything obviously interfering with them. Maybe you've got some technical law science. This isn't exactly your area of expertise, though. Someone has been maintaining it. Something about this setup seems dimly familiar, but you'll be damned if you know what you're supposed to do about it. I'm failing all of these checks. Images of your body smashed against the pavement flood your mind. This is dangerous. But I don't know what I'm doing. It's gotta be you. I'm manning the decks down here. But what if I slip and fall? Maybe you break an arm. Maybe you break your neck. Could go either way. Honestly, but that's what the Invalids Fund is for. So don't worry about it for now. Okay, let's do this. Climb the monument.
Man, these ravers have really taken me on a, a little adventure, haven't they? Between this, the entire dance club, the whole reality. Your Clean. gloves give you a solid grip on the metal bar. This feels pleasingly familiar. You don't exactly cut a lithesome figure, but after several moments of scrambling, you manage to hoist yourself atop the monument. That performance was frankly an embarrassment. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Hope nobody saw it. You're doing all right, detective. Just keep your focus on the task at hand. Examine the connections. The connection itself is nothing more than a little braid of exposed wire wrapped about the hoof of the horse. A copper fetter, it cannot slip. The whole monument is covered in a thin but durable layer of oil and grime. It's obvious no one has cleaned it in years. Well, what's it look like? The whole statue's covered in weird oils. I think it's good for the connections. That's not good. We should have cleaned the centaur man first. Pretty rude that we didn't. Hang on. I'm looking at Egg's checklist. He says, if all fails, bend antenna. Narrow is the hardcore way. That make any sense to you? What are we supposed to use to bend the antenna? It says here, muscle style. Uh, what good is that supposed to do? Hmm. Good question. Maybe he's saying we're casting too wide a net. Got to narrow our receiving band so we pick up the big bed without the spookers. Since you're already up there, I say you should do it. The speed freak is right. The responsibility is yours and yours alone. There's no turning back now. Look at Philippe the Third. You are face to face with Philip the Third. The Bronze King looks toward the west. Something about his features seems bizarrely distorted. Look at the horse. This faithful steed is in nearly as poor a condition as its rider. Look up. The sky is grey and overcast. Somehow, the raindrops seem to fall more slowly from this angle. Through the scrim, you can just make out the shadow of Coalition Warship Archer a few kilometers to the east. Look down. A few of the idle lorry drivers and strike breakers gesture at you with their cigarettes, more out of curiosity than anything else. From the window of one of the adjacent apartment buildings, an older woman leans out, her heavy breasts sagging. She yells a single word you can't make out, and then shuts the window with a violent thunk. Alright, attempt to narrow the receiving mode manually. You allow the broken hunk of metal to clatter to the ground. It wasn't clear to you it did anything anyway. Nein, Liebling. Huh? Sounds like that was a false move. Signal's even worse now. Yeah, that piece of junk didn't even work. Probably because you broke it. He's right. This was your responsibility. Well, that's what I'm here to do is assign it, so I'll take it. I'm going to turn all the dials to maximum. Probably going to burn out our power supply, but that might be the only way. A maelstrom of sound, swirling and swirling around an invisible point. It's mounting, mounting. Nicht mehr derselbe ist, seit er auf einem Luftschiff aus Grad zurückgekommen ist. Firewalker, please respond. 
It's too much. Your eardrums are throbbing. About to burst. A long winter. Long and cold. And then, nothing. Try it now! Coalition Warship Archer. This is RCM Officer Firewalker. Please acknowledge. This is Warship Archer. We are acknowledging and accepting you. Though, we are still getting quite a bit of interference. This is as good as it's gonna get. I'll keep us aligned as long as I can. But this isn't a social mission. You got it. There is so much you wish you could ask. But you probably only have time for one or two questions before the signal is lost. Please be advised that you are speaking on a public frequency. What is your request? Um... Yeah, what is real democracy coming to Revishol? We can assure you, it is coming as soon as possible. In a few months then? That's rather optimistic. Though of course, it depends on the contingencies. What do you mean contingencies? You must understand, the moral intern is responsible for ensuring the continuance and flourishing of mankind for the next 3,000 years. The planning division must account for a great many possible outcomes and chance events. Fortunately, we have contingency spreads to help guide our decision making. Of course, there is no one spread that can reasonably account for all these possible events. But at least, we are able to prepare for the most likely eventualities. Wait, how does contingency spreads actually work? It's not really our area of expertise, but we can try to explain. Picture a smooth hill made from fresh dirt. Now, if you stand atop this hill, and put a glass of water over it, what will happen? The dirt will get wet. <sighs> You're thinking about this metaphor too literally. A sigh. The point is that we know only that the water will run down, but not what course it will take. If we place a rock in the water's path, will it divert to the left or to the right? We cannot say, but we may predict which way it might run in either event. That is the essence of the idea. You might also imagine these spreads as a kind of tree, with every juncture representing a different event, and every branch representing a different timeline. You're saying the moral intern uses contingency spreads to see the future? Not exactly. No one can know the future. But with contingency spreads, it is possible to predict what the future realities might reasonably look like. But we shouldn't overstate their importance. They are simply one of many tools used by the moral intern to set policy. So where does Revishol fit into these contingencies? That's impossible to say. It may be that Revishol has a great role to play, or no role at all. That is the nature of contingency. But didn't the Wild Pines representative say that Revishol would resolve history? You must understand, when we speak of contingency spreads, we are talking about the most fantastically complex data visualization Human beings are capable of producing, with thousands of events, from elections and wars to natural disaster or scientific miracles, and millions of possible outcomes. It may be the case that, under certain scenarios, Revachal is vitally important, as it was during the collision landings in OA. It may also be the case, in many other equally plausible scenarios, that Revachal is simply another once great city, like countless others throughout history. Revishol was founded to resolve history. It's the most important city in the world. Perhaps, perhaps not. The world is full of great cities that have resolved the questions of their time. Lachert, Bradford, our own home of Advesperashit. It's even possible the cities that will resolve the questions of the future have not been founded yet. For this reason, responsibility for developing contingency spreads is only assigned to highly trained analysts working with advanced radio computers and a steady supply of drones. Okay, but I still want to know when real democracy is coming. Of course. While the content of individual contingency spreads is deeply classified, many degrees beyond our access, everything we have heard from the Provisional Commission indicates that the transition is proceeding according to the appropriate timetable. What if some people want democracy to come faster? Of course. 
The coalition supports the Revachalian people's desire for full democracy. We encourage you to contact the offices of the Provisional Commission if you're serious about getting involved. How can I get involved? Oh, there are many things you can do. If you're interested in learning how to canvass for signatures, manage the polling place, or register voters, the Commission would be more than happy to direct you to a workshop. In fact, you may have picked the perfect time to get involved. Revachal is nearly ready to begin the first days of democratization. Soon, the people of Revachal will vote for slates of candidates who will make up the Transitional Advisory Council that will oversee the second phase of democratization. What's this Transitional Advisory Council? The Council is modeled after similar bodies developed in a number of transitional democracies. Its role is to devise and shape the future institutions of Revachalian democracy, according to local conditions. Local conditions, in this case, referring to incompetence, graft, and violence. Once selected, council members will even have the opportunity to join one of several officially sanctioned political wings, depending on their ideological beliefs and policy preferences. What do these wings represent? A very important question. The wings are carefully selected to represent a wide spectrum of political thought. Typically, there's a liberal technocratic wing, a social democratic wing, and even a conservative populist wing. You wouldn't believe some of the ideas they express, but a vibrant and free political culture requires that all perspectives be given voice, even those many may find objectionable. Who picks the slates of candidates? In most cases, the Provisional Council selects them from a cross-section of the local population to ensure the slates actually reflect the people they represent. Of course, such a situation is not ideal. We would all prefer for the Vashalians to nominate the representatives directly. But that is why it's a transitional council. How many of these phases are there until we have real democracy? Our best theoreticians believe that three to five phases are appropriate for states that lack strong democratic tradition, which would certainly apply to Revachal. But we must stress that real democracy is an ongoing process and not simply an outcome. It must be cultivated and preserved if it is to endure. This is it. Final question time. I can already feel our alignment getting shaky. Is everything all right? We lost the connection for a moment. Who am I speaking with? You are currently speaking with Coalition Worthy Partner, flagship of Insurcom Forces in Revachon. Are you the captain? No. The captain of the Archer is deeply classified intelligence. We are the second signaler. Sure, but who are you? I need to know your name. Our name is not important. All you need to know is that we hold the position of second signaler aboard the Archer. You really don't have the faintest guess what her name could be. You were never very good at this sort of thing. All these checks are absurd for this, uh, sequence. There's something in the way she refers to herself, always, with the first person plural. A deliberate blurring of the boundary between herself and the institution she represents. Just one thing. Why do you keep referring to yourself with the plural? Because it's standard practice for signalers to use the pluralis officialis during the course of our duties. It's meant to serve as a reminder that we don't speak only for ourselves. For instance, as second signaler, we represent Coalition Mercy Partner, which in turn represents Insurcom and the Coalition more generally, which in turn represents the Moralist International, which itself represents the interests of 1.2 billion people across the world. Meaning, she's the voice of all those living souls. So when I'm talking to you, it's like I'm talking to all of humanity. No, of course not. There are many nations outside the moral interest umbrella, in Seoul, Samara, and elsewhere. At most, you might say the moral inter represents between a quarter and a third of humanity. Perhaps you could say that we represent the interest and hopes of a great many people. But you could say, just as easily, that we are the assistant to the secretary of a factotum, no more remarkable than the lowest cashier of a common fleet. It all depends on your perspective. Who is the secretary? The chief signaler our superiors. They are ultimately responsible for all communications aboard the Arthur. But now, we've wandered quite far afield. What was your request? It's been a long winter. Long and cold. Bad news, little man. Signal's going down. These waves are receding. Time to let go. Firewalker, are you there? Uh, hang on, Archer. 
meant to ask you about the Committee of Responsibility. Firewalker, please repeat. Your signal is very weak. I said I meant to ask you about the Committee of Responsibility. Er kann doch auch nächstes Jahr zur Akademie gehen. Nothing important, but connection. Going to update the receiving frequency. And the line goes quiet. The lieutenant gives a long sigh as he removes his headphones. He looks up at you. I think it's best for you to climb off the statue now, detective. Your real work is done here. Just give me a minute. The sun-warmed bronze tingles beneath your fingertips and between your thighs. Your legs have grown stiff. You've been up here quite a while. You look around. The strike breakers are still shouting their slogans and waving their hand-painted signs. Beneath you, the lieutenant and the speed freak have begun disconnecting a few cables. You could stay a while longer if you wanted. Yeah, wait a little longer. Out on the bay, a pair of dinghies bob and roll in the waves. The breeze drags the voices of the fishermen toward the plaza faint and indecipherable. Further out, a few dirty icebergs drift to and fro. Further still, at the outer edge of your recognizance, the ancient ruins of the sea fort lay piled on the horizon. Everything all right, detective? Yeah, I'm fine. Listen, I understand that you're disappointed that things did not turn out how you might have hoped. But that's just how things go. We all must accept our own shortcomings and limitations. Now come on. We still have a long day ahead of us. Climb down. About time. You grab that amp. Forget the cables. Need to leave some evidence of our antenna to inspire future generations. <sighs> What's one more trip across the water lock? Lieutenant sighs. Yeah, <laughs> the lieutenant doesn't like uh doesn't like exercise it seems. He brings up the uh the running to and fro very often. <laughs> All right, cop man. We've held up more than our share of this collaboration. I hope you recognize how much the old core underground came through for you. If you want to show your appreciation, we can still use your help. Egg is the one to talk to. Hardcore! Mutual aid! I never let down my hardcore brothers. Or I never let my hardcore brothers down. Sure. You have to say that now, but it's all right. I'll put this tech away later. Think there's an extra can set in case you want to grab a souvenir or something. Don't think anyone will miss it. Why can't I get over here and grab this? Hardcore aesthetic. Oh yes, drugs. We're talking about drugs. Let's face it, these flirtations with the hardcore aesthetic have all been leading up to one question. Can I do drugs harder now that I'm a hard cop? And the answer is yes, you can. You can do one more blast of pyrolidon and yellow shit powder. You can even pull a ciggy and a lager on top of that. There. You've truly made the hardcore your own thing now. So plus one to endurance, really useful for doing drugs, and plus one to volition, same thing hard man. Sounds really good. Plus two to two different stat or plus one to two different stats. I really want to research these as well. Yeah, I'll look through these off camera. Maybe I'll replace one of those later as well. We'll see. Then specialist grade headset. It's two to inland empire and minus one reaction speed. A giant pair of cans to keep you safe from the world. This particular set seems to have changed hands several times. They become sweaty after extended use. Plus two to inland empire in your own head. Reaction speed. Say that again. Alright, we we'll call it here. Next episode, we'll speak to Egghead. I know we still have to call the public library about the body on the boardwalk. We'll get to that eventually. Let's uh, finish helping out the Ravers for now. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.